In this video, I want to continue with rules for calculating derivatives. I already know the derivative of several important functions, constants, linear functions, sine, cosines, and exponentials. I have linearity and the power rule, which lets me differentiate polynomials. However, linearity and the power rule are about constants, addition, and subtraction, not multiplication and division of functions. I want to deal with those constructions in this video. So let me start with the product of two functions. If I have two functions f and g, how do I differentiate their product? For linearity, the derivative split up very nicely over addition and subtraction. That doesn't work for multiplication. The derivative of a product isn't the product of the two derivatives. What is it instead? Well, it is this pattern. I multiply each function by the derivative of the other and add up the two possibilities. This is addition of function, so the order here doesn't matter. You can do the derivative of the first times the second before or after the derivative of the second times the first, as long as you're multiplying each function by the derivative of the other and adding them up. This is called the product rule. This is also called the Leibniz rule, named after Gottfried Leibniz, one of the 17th century mathematicians who worked on the early versions of calculus. Let me do some examples. I suggest, particularly when you are first learning these rules, that you carefully label the pieces. In the first example, I label x squared as f and e to the x is g. Then the first term is the derivative of x squared, which is 2x by the power rule, times g, which is e to the x. And the second term of x, the second term is f, which is x squared, multiplied by the derivative of g, which is e to the x, since e to the x is the unique function which doesn't change under differentiation. In the second example, f is x squared and g is sine of x. The derivative of x squared is 2x, and the derivative of sine is cosine. I put these in the form, multiplying each by the other original function. In the third example, f is e to the x, which is its own derivative, and g is sine, and the derivative of that is cosine. And I can put these derivatives into the form, again, multiplying each by the other function. That was products of functions. What about quotients of functions? If I have two functions f and g, what is the derivative of f divided by g? This one is even more complicated than the product rule. Here, I take the denominator multiplied by the derivative of the numerator, then subtract the opposite pairing, numerator times the derivative of the denominator. Then this is all put over the square of the denominator. Again, this is a form and I suggest that you carefully label f and g when you apply this form. I'll show this in a couple of examples. The examples I want to use um, demonstrate, to demonstrate the quotient rule are trig functions. I know the derivatives of sine and cosine. Using the quotient rule, I can calculate the derivatives of all the other trig ratios. Let me start with tangent. Tangent is, by definition, sine over cosine. So I have a quotient with the top f equals sine and the bottom g equals cosine. The derivative of f is cosine and the derivative of cosine is negative sine. So I put these into the form g times the derivative of f minus f times the derivative of g all over g squared. The first term here is cosine times cosine since the derivative of sine is cosine. So this is cosine squared. The second term has sine times negative sine, since the derivative of cosine is negative sine, and the negatives will cancel out here to make an addition. The denominator is just the original denominator squared, cos squared of x. Now I can use some trigonometry. The most important trig identity is the identity that sine squared plus cos squared equals one. So the numerator here simplifies to just one. I have one over cosine squared, since one over cosine in second, this can be written as 1 over secant squared. The rate of change of the tangent function is measured by the square of the secant function. One more trig example to finish. Say I want to differentiate secant. Well, secant is 1 over cosine. This is a quotient with f equals 1 and g equals cosine. In the first part, I have g times the derivative of f. But the derivative of a 1 is 0, so the first term is g times 0, and anything times 0 is just 0, so the first term is 0. Then I subtract f times the derivative of g, f is 1, derivative of cosine is negative sine, and again the negatives cancel, so the numerator is just the sine function. 
The denominator is the square of the original denominator, cosine squared. Then again, I can do some trig to write this in another form. I can split up the denominator multiplication to write this as 1 over cosine times sine over cosine. 1 over cosine is secant, and sine over cosine is tangent. So I can write this as secant times tangent. And the rate of change of secant is measured by secant times tangent.